The party's still rocking here at the Grovian Doll Museum. We are here in Pacific Grove and we are mad for plaid. Plaid is one of our favorite outfit, well colors of a, uh, is it a color? No. It's a design. It's a design. It's, it's one of our favorite designs to see on a doll. And we are wearing it today and we are decked out. We are about to have a seminar with Michael Kanatis and very special guest, Chris Madrid. Michael, take us away. Hi, Ruby Lane. Hello. This is Chris Madrid. Hi, Ruby Hi, Lane. Chris. Hi again. We are so excited to see you again. Thank your, you. Your Thank you. Uh, paper mache interview part one and two was just so phenomenal. Thank you for sharing your collection with us during Doll Week. Oh, I I loved it. It was great. I got to talk and nobody was interrupting me. It was awesome. <laughs> well, we have a big studio audience here today. Everyone's so excited to chat with you again and see what you have. So we're excited. Great. Well, first of all, I have something to show Chris. Look what I found at my case at home, mine and David's case at home. Look at this. One of our little French fashions. <gasps> has a little kilt oh, with a jacket. That. Do you like that? I hate <laughs> you. I, really? I hate you with a hot <laughs> passion. Good. Thank so you. just you put that good. over by my purse and I'll keep, I'll, yeah, I'll take care of that for you. I just had to get that in, get that out. <laughs> That's gorgeous by the way. But really. um, uh, Chris with our doll, uh, doll club, Carmel Doll and Toy Study Group, has given the, us this program before, and it's basically Scottish dolls in uh, um, plaids and kilts and whatnot. And it's really an absolutely charming part of collecting that you can do when you just feel like you need a guilty pleasure. Yes. So I was telling Michael before this that, you know, sometimes you have these wonderful dolls and, you know, you look around here and there's Ma magnificent dolls and you know sometimes you can afford a great big fancy meal and sometimes you can't you need a mcnugget <laughs> you, you need, need a mcnugget, McNugget. <laughs> and you need a little <laughs> snack a so little these snack. are my little doll snacks <laughs> i love it so we we haven't really shown any of the dolls we have been introducing oh, you guys so we're going nice to do a little pan, pan. yes what a wonderful and festive thing to do right now for our doll holiday celebration. We have so many different kinds of dolls here. Well, the thing about this collection and um, what I love about it is, I, you know, I love dolls. I love all kinds of dolls. You know, you saw the paper machés, which mm -hmm. are gorgeous, and they're very, most of them are very stately, and some of them are dignified, and then you get to these wonderful, charming little children. Most of them are children. Um, in terms of collecting, they're not expensive, but they really are fun to collect. I get a lot of joy from it. And also, um, as you can see, there's all different kinds of dolls here, but together they really make kind of a big impact. They really have mm -hmm. a, um, they're, they're much more impactful as a group than individuals. Yes, absolutely. And I can see that you could really use these in holiday decorations. Do you, do you use them at? Yes, they do. Actually, one year I, well, I didn't hang, you know, the heavy ones on the tree, but I did do a whole tree with them. And another time I did on my mantle, I have some larger Santa Claus dolls, and I put all the little dolls around him. And it was just, you know, the colors are happy. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, they they wear that all all year long, but it just really reads holiday, and that's why it's kind of fun right now. Yes, because absolutely, just, and, and for you to yeah. share them with us again. A lot um, of we see a lot of Nutcrackers wearing plaid. It's just such a fun, fun, fun um, thing to see. Chris, Look what which do you think is your earliest um, doll at this point in this in this study group? Um, I would say either. Because I don't think many of these are really, really old, but Donald or the Parian probably. Donald, I think you should show the, the, the audience Donald. Donald is the best. Let's see Donald. He's a washable doll. This is, look, at, look him. at Donald. Oh, we just love his hair. Isn't he adorable? Is that his original hair? Yes. Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. And then look at the, he even Wonderful. has his little ribbon still, his gay, because they had to, you look know, at those, tie those on garters to so hold up sweet. those. Uh, should we check to see the question that everyone has? Oh, I don't think we, I've ever looked. Have, have, did you? 
No, I haven't looked under there yet. Well, let's do it. Let's see what Donald's got on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Donald cheated. <laughs> Donald has pants on. <laughs> actually, what a fun doll. Yeah, actually, most of the time they do say traditionally they do not wear. Um, and that, that Underwear. Yeah, uh, underwear. Underwear underneath the kilt. Right. And that, you know, the... But he's of the he's from really from the Victorian age. So oh, sure. Would be, there would yes. Be mo they wouldn't, in a toy store, they wouldn't allow that. They'd no. They'd have him no. in pants. No, I have a feeling if we lifted most of their... Which we're not going to We do. could do. We that could be the whole program. Oh, my God. Yeah, just <laughs> hang on. We're going to lift everybody's skirt here. But no, we're not going to do that. Um, they didn't because, he, you know, actually, the, the tartans actually started... Um, back in the 1600s in Scotland and they used to wear it was called a long kilt and it was a piece of material probably 18 feet long and they had they, they called them the long kilt and actually the looms in Scotland only the the width was only like 28 inches so they actually had to um, you know sew See. them together to make it long enough but they just sort of you know wrapped them and they used them to sleep in and they mm. used them I mean they pretty much lived in these tartans and until the middle of the 1800s um, back before um, Culloden, Culloden they were you know it's like you could tell where somebody lived by the style but not by clan so you know a certain area would have a certain color of the plaid because of the dyes that were available and the looms that had the, you know the people that were weaving and then um, unfortunately um, there was a terrible battle. Um, Bonnie Prince Charlie did not do well by the Scottish people. And there was a, bottle, a, a battle at Culloden and um, 1,800 um, Highlanders were killed in 15 minutes. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Um, they had an interesting way of fighting, which they had a musket there and they would like take their shirts off and they would like, t you know, so the, the that was one of the things with the long, the long um, kilts is that they could easily wrap them around. So what they do is they they do a musket charge, and then they just run towards the enemy lines and use clubs and everything. Well, what happened is they didn't have enough of a surprise because usually that scared the other um, the other army, and it didn't. So they knew they were coming, and also they had um, improved their bayonets. So in you know eighteen you know in fifteen minutes. Pretty much the mm. uh, the revolution was done, and what happened is the English um, banned the wearing of tartans by the Scottish in 1746, and wearing it or showing any part of the tartan was actually punishable by death. Really. So between mm. 1746 and 1792, the only people who were allowed to actually wear the tartan plaid was someone in the British Army. Um, and they did wear them. So they had, a, I think, mm. a Highland regiment. Then after 1792, they were allowed to wear the tartans again, but by that time it had become more of a ceremonial thing, and that's when the clans, you know, started having their specific. Mm. But that's sort that of the... That is so, so interesting. So this is very much a heritage. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, plaids are a heritage, yes. a mm -hmm. Scottish heritage, and to certain regions and families right, right and I mean that's how important a piece of cloth was that the government had to ban it yes because they felt that anybody that political who, statement yeah anybody who wore it would you know really you know uh, rally the troops and they just didn't want that so and in, in a way these dolls that are on the table they represent a certain amount of ethnic pride a pride and yes. Your family and your region and your absolutely, um, absolutely. So, so how did you really decide to start on these, collecting these, this type of doll? Was it just one that you thought I'll just do one? Yeah, they always say I'll just do one, doesn't it? And then you're, you then you 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 have the one and you think oh that's really cute and then you buy another one you're at another, you know and all of a sudden it's like oh. I you know, collection. you were just talking about, I just noticed this little one. Oh, yeah. he's. And we're flipping our, our wig off here. Yes, but I know. I did. Isn't this a, um officer? That is an officer in the English army. So that could wear plaid. Right, because he could wear plaid. 
and actually this, the Busby, which sticks up like this, is more British than it is um, Scottish. Um, these little, the little tams, like somebody had, oh, this one had the tam shanter and that's very, was called a bonnet. And then this is a tam shanter and this actually, the name tam shanter came from a, a book that was written in 1790 and the name of the main character was Tam O'Shanter. Mm. And that's before that, they were just called bonnets. But anyway, that was the bonnet. And then when, what happened with the bonnet that would be kind of puffy, they would take the bonnet and then they would fluff it up and then they would put a crease down the middle here. And a lot of these are wearing what's called Glengarry caps. And that's what happened is they took the bonnet and then they, they just put a crease in it. And so you see, a, you see actually a lot of them on the table have that style. Well, one, one time we were in, uh, Dave and I were in Will, Williamsburg and I went into a shop to buy some gloves and he waited outside and I came out with a hat <laughs> and it was a Scottish jam. So of course I couldn't leave it alone. So I took it home and cut off the pom poms and uh, trimmed the ribbon. And the funny thing is whenever I wear it, everyone thinks I'm wearing a French cap. So it does have a similar um, yes, it does. shape to a, a mm -hmm. French, a little French cap. Yeah, it does. But what you'll see is the plaid band, which is tighter, and it always has a pom-pom on the top for the tam -shanter. There's so many wonderful dolls here, and I know they're from uh, different parts of the world. One of our viewers wanted to know, did any of these actually originate in Scotland? The dolls, most of these are probably German mm -hmm. manufactured. They were, a lot of them are, and then actually most of the cloth, there's a couple of Lenchies here and Maggies. Those are both Italian. However, if interestingly enough, there's two of these little guys that are still in their original box. And, and the box is plaid too, which is so is much fun. Cute? Yes. And this one here is in the box it's still tied into the box and if you look here it says highlander doll dressed in scotland royal so they, stewart they probably had yeah. the dolls imported from germany and then dressed yes mm -hmm. so they probably were dressed in scotland is yeah for the most part i think because they you see the similarity they always have the the um i can't remember what they call them they're they're they're, they're um socks but they have that with a garter um, this is the um, sporin because they, you know, particularly uh, when you're just wrapping a piece of cloth around, you don't have any pockets. Mm -hmm. So they used that. Most of it was either fur or goat or cow hide. And then they used that. And then there's the black jacket is pretty standard. Uh, he has a uh, Glengarry cap with the, with the plaid band. And then usually... The kilt with the um, with the long kilts, it was all one piece of fabric. So it went around, and then it came up, and it went over, and they had like a belt that held it, and they also had like a sword belt. But this is a short kilt, so it's pretty standard to have that with the pre pleated, and then have this um, tartan scarf or over it. So Chris, most of the dolls on this table. They're boys. Yes. Actually, only boys wore kilts. Um, girls would wear long dresses of the tartan material. So this Georgine doll, American, This is, is this a little girl or a boy? It's a little girl. And that's the thing is if you look to see, the girls are wearing kilts, but that's, you know. This is this is, Americanization? Of yes, it? yes. It's definitely Americanization. But it's darling. It's so it? yeah. sweet. Yeah. And it's so cheerful. And I think that's one of the things about if you specialize in a particular type of collection, I might not buy a Molly's doll, mm -hmm. but because within the context book. of the collection, mm -hmm. I will buy one. And I mean, I love cloth dolls. And I the mean, thing about these, these are available. You could go absolutely. on to Ruby Lane and find them. Yeah, I bought a lot of these on Ruby Lane. Oh, a lot well, that's of these good to on, hear. Yes, I bought... Probably half of the dolls here on Ruby, on Ruby Lane. Lane. The Dolls Lane is a wonderful place to just find little tidbits of, of everything. And, and what I love that I'm seeing here is that you, you, you're very focused, but there are dolls from every price range, from every maker, from yes. every type. And it opens up, has it opened up uh, some discovery for you? Absolutely. And it, it does, because if you're not, you know, it's like I do collect paper mache and I do collect other things, but you tend to have, typically have a focus on your mm -hmm. collection. But when you collect 
a theme, mm -hmm. you will buy dolls and look at dolls that you might not yeah, normally I, look at. I don't think you're, as far as I know, that you would buy, as, as long as I've known you, to buy a hard plastic doll. No. And I saw one here that was very cute. Yeah, where this little This going? little girl right yeah, here. Yeah, she's Roddy. Is yeah. she adorable? Yeah. yeah. yeah that, the Roddy dolls are fairly common on um, Ruby Lane. You can find them, but they're adorable. I mean, yeah. she's they're adorable, so they're cute. affordable, and they're just fun, and it yeah. and it brings up a, a, just another and, level of appreciation. Tell tell us about this cloth. Yeah, we were eyeing this one earlier. This one's yes. wonderful. With that center wonderful? seam. He is WPA. So that's Americana. Really, Americana made in Michigan. Wow. I have never seen a WPA doll that looked like this. Wonderful. And. Yeah, and by the way, one of your videos, I saw it in a video, and I got in touch with the Ruby Lane uh, a dealer dealer and that bought happened. it. Really? Yes, yes. So she, that's she came from from watching one of these, and you were in a booth, and I looked at it, and I went, "Oh, really? Did oh you, my did goodness! They talk about yeah, it, or here. did you just spot it? You sh you talked about it, and I was like, put it down. Put it down. Put it down. <laughs> <laughs> and you were able to get it. Well, that's so much fun. And Michael and um. Chris, just for our viewers real quick, could you guys explain what the WPA dolls are? It's the, it was a work program that uh, Frank, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, during the Great Depression, um, we, you know, in those days we supported arts. And to get us out of the Great Depression, they created uh, work programs uh, to create um, every, any, anything you can think of, sculpture, dolls, etc. Actually, technically, this doll does not belong to Chris. Technically, it belongs to the country. And the government could say, we want our doll back because all the things that those artists made were for the country. Like for instance, in Pacific Grove, in our uh, post office, there is a WPA mural. So the starving artists that weren't um, earning any money, mm -hmm. it was a way they created to... all kinds of programs. And that really got, I think, the, the country ready for, the, for the, uh, the war and the fabulous 50s. And they did all kinds of you know, contra conservation movements and yeah. all of our national parks, mm -hmm. all of the roadways and paths and everything, that's all WPA. We're used so, to seeing WPA um, with the, a, lot of, a lot of hair and these ones are just that yeah, one's they, so different. different, different mm -hmm. cities. Yeah, it depends on yeah, which Yeah, different starts. cities. You see the stocking ant ones that mm -hmm. you're talking about. I love those. They, they're larger and they have a smaller size too, but they do have, they have a Scottish one that is but I think that that's <laughs> on true. my wish list. On your list. <laughs> but I think list, the WPAs yes. are really um, something where you can see that, you know, a lot of people just are born hating their government. And you can see that that was a period in time where the government was actually working for the people, getting us out of the, 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 you know, the big crash. And, it was, and they left an incredible um, imprint on our society that we're feeling today. And you know, and FDR is still too close uh, historically, but in another hundred years, he will probably be, his, his face will be carved out of granite too. He was one of those yeah, presidents. He he the only, a, I mean, you know, a three-term president. That was really pretty amazing. Um, so a lot, a lot, all WPA things, and it's all around you if you just open your eyes and kind of mm -hmm. see that the projects mm -hmm. that they did. Catherine Peterson said, just said that uh, Chris's heart stopped when you said that that's not uh, your doll. It belongs to the government. That's kind of funny. <laughs> well, it's, it's true. She knows it's, me too well. It's true. <laughs> It's true. I was sticking on your. I don't think they item. really. They don't really want them, but it, technically, it's yes. theirs. Right. Yeah. I want to talk about these because um, these actually are the cloth ones are made in uh, Great Britain. Look at their little applied ears. Isn't Who are they made cute? by? That's a that's a Farnell. Looks like Farnell. Well, really I've never cute. seen a face like they this. They made beautiful, yes. beautiful, beautiful toys. They yeah. did toys. Really, and there's then there's that's Farnell and she's Farnell. And then there's a Nora Wellings, which is probably one of the most common of the but Scottish dolls. But I don't, know, I don't know that you see those that often. Oh, I so think cute. the one thing about it is you might think something is common, but then when you decide, okay, I'm going to collect um, Chad Valley 
Scottish dolls. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then you actually say, I want that. Then it changes it. Because then, then I mean, we've done things where we've ne needed, say, for instance, a size 9 tech chameau. And you think, oh, there's plenty of them. And in a whole year, mm -hmm. we could only find three. So, I mean, once you kind of put your laser beam into a collecting thing, it does change. It does, it does. And I mean, like he's, like Michael said, here's a composition, a really nice composition boy, unmarked. I probably would never buy that, but. That's darling. Because of the, yeah, he's a wonderful doll. But look at those clothes. Yeah, I mean, the work wonderful and, clothes. And also too, we've talked about sewing this week. And you know what, actually these look very simple but they are much more complicated mm -hmm. than you would think because it's top stitching and uh, tailoring. It, it takes a lot of skill to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got some ruffles and so you can always hide a, a mistake with a bow, you know, or a piece of lace, but this is very uh, Yeah, plaid tailored. is, plaid is um, unforgiving when you yes. try to sew with it. I was just about to say that it's a very thick fabric and it and it would be very hard to work with it is and also you have to you know with the matching when you get around you exactly you're, you're hoping to god you've got you know the good quality clothing when the, the, when the side, pattern yeah. matches up yes exactly this is a really gorgeous little item and what is it a german composition or it's germany i don't i don't know i think is it it's biscaloid i'm not sure but look at that look at the beauty of that Again, look at, we we're talking mm -hmm. about top stitching. That's, that's incredible. Right on the edge like that. It's just fabulous. What about the names of the plaids? I'm not so good on that one. You're not so good on that? Yeah, I think, I think most of these plaids are just, I think a lot of these are Stuart, actually, because that Stuart is the red, vibrant plaid. And that you seem to be. Or do you think you were Stuart in a past life? Because you, you're drawn to them. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I have such an affinity for... I've always liked the Scottish culture. I don't know why. So maybe I was, you know. If I do my, if I do my ancestry and I show up in a kilt, yeah. I'm golden. <laughs> yeah, I'm a steward. But I do, I do love our Italian yeah. Scottish... Uh, These are so much fun. Yeah, they're Thank really you. great. Chris, do you remember your first uh, plaid dress doll or when you decided, hey, you know, this is what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to start collecting these. Um, You know, I'm trying to remember which one was the first oh, this one. This one's wonderful, too. Oh, yeah. Isn't he great? Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? He's a sweetheart. I, you know, and I love pairings. I think love that, um, velvet jacket. you know, Queen Victoria became very uh, enamored with life in Scotland because they had some privacy um, when they uh, visited their, their home there. And I think she was the one that decided that the kilts or the uh, plaids had to have names. That's very possible. And I don't mean yeah. that she could make a, a law, but she could request it, and, and most likely they would. Yeah, because it um, didn't come out, and that's yes. about when she really popularized yes, it. Yes, she, uh, the, Victoria and Empress Eugenie, both, you know, one in England, one in the continent, they made plaid go wild. Yeah. Because Empress Eugenie was half Scottish. Oh, I didn't know so, that. Yes, so she loved wow. all things Scottish. We have learned so much about the history of plaid and, and the history of uh, a lot of things in this video. Uh, Chris, your collection is so whimsical and fun and what a fun thing to share for the holidays and for our holiday party. Well, thank you. Thank you. I enjoy sharing. This is how we roll here. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're very excited about. So what do we have to look forward to later? I know we're, we're going to have a couple more seminars and, and a grand finale. I guess we have to have a grand finale, but I think that our audience has to decide, did Chris do a good enough job to get lunch? Give her a hand <laughs> if she did. Yay! Yay! Wonderful. And you know, I should point this out. While we've been working hard with doing this with Rachel and our studio audience, David has been making sure that every need we have David has and has we can actually fulfilled. we can actually see his back right there. Has been fulfilled. <laughs> Hi David. 
And some of us he are going to have to join such good Jenny care of us. Craig afterwards, <laughs> but that's how it goes. Yes, thank you, Michael. Thank you, David, so much. We will be back on and we will see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.